All right, so today is heavy squats and heavy deadlifts. It is currently 4.18 a.m., and we're going to get after it today. Six. Every time I do squats, I'm reminded why I hate them. Why I love and hate them, I should say. Yeah, I don't really have a lot to say today. I think I'm just dialed in. Like, I'm very focused on my lifts. I haven't done a squat with this weight in a pretty long time. My goal here is to do three to six reps with the focus being on building strength, not necessarily the hypertrophy effect. Because to be completely honest, I don't want to get to a point again where wearing jeans is difficult because my thighs aren't fitting in them well. I'm over that. Like I'd rather just have strong legs than like big old beefy legs. Just doesn't, it's not the life for me anymore. I'm not wearing shorts and sweatpants all day. I also just don't want to put the focus in when it comes to lifting for these lifts. Anytime I'm doing a heavy lift, the worst part, especially with squats, is that last rep when you rack the weight and you get off and you're like, I don't feel so great. All the blood is rushing from my thighs back to my head. The nice part though is the three to five minute rest breaks because there's a lot you can do in that time. And if you're me, you're editing videos on social media. So that's always a plus. All right, heavy set squat number two. I feel like a jello. I'm parched, so I need some water. This is how much water you should drink a day. I'm just kidding, but can you imagine having to drink this much water every day? No thanks. No thanks, Steve. What are some names you don't hear anymore? Betty, Wilma. Was that ever a name or is that just the Flintstone? Bert, Ernie, Elmo. You don't hear any kids being named Elmo these days. Elmer's another one. You don't hear people. Elmer Glue, Elmer Fudd. You don't hear those names anymore. Ronald, you know? One, two, four. All right, enough of those. You know, one thing that's really helped me getting back in the swing of things, is I don't tell myself I have to complete workouts. I know that sounds strange, but I'm trying to go through the mindset of somebody who really doesn't want to do this, has maybe some prior experience, but really not a lot of consistent experience working out. And I'm trying to put myself in their mindset so that I can think, how would I stay consistent if I hated doing this? Like, it's easy for me because it was my lifestyle for 16, 17 years. I worked in this industry. But for somebody who doesn't have that experience, what is it like? And I learned a really valuable lesson reading the, the uh, book Atomic Habits by James Clear. And he gave the example of somebody who told himself he didn't have to work out, but he had to drive to the gym, sign in. And if he sat there the rest of the workout time or sat there for five minutes, didn't matter. The point was he had to get there and he had to take that action and he had to break up what he wanted to achieve into very small pieces. Since I'm over here, we might as well go over deadlifting form. It is pouring outside. You know, one thing I miss about being in a gym is that when you're done deadlifting, you're always looking for somebody else who wants to deadlift or at least use the plates that you were using so you don't have to re-rack them. I miss that. So I had a female bodybuilder teach me how to deadlift, which is probably the best thing I could have done because women are way more in tune with their hips than men are. And she taught me how important it is to really push your butt back, get your hips back, and keep your back straight during a deadlift. Now I'm gonna be using a trap bar today. I like trap bars for lots of reasons. The first reason is it puts the weight a little bit more in the back side of my body where it should be, which is going to decrease the risk of injury. And I have had back injuries due to deadlifting before, mostly because I was lifting like an idiot. So don't do what I'm gonna do or what I used to do. I like trap bars also because they're great for understanding how to do a deadlift at a beginning stage without risking any sorts of injury whatsoever. So anyway, once you get in position, probably the most important thing is getting yourself set up properly and making sure your hips stay back. The most common mistake with deadlifts is not pushing your butt back. And I think the best way to do this is to get up against the wall, get like two or three feet away, and just push your butt back until you hit the wall. Now, hopefully you have somebody else with you that can help you understand, okay, that's far enough back or that's not far enough back. But the idea is hips must be pushed back past your heels. You know, more than anything, that gets my hands. Like the weight is heavy and all, but my hands are trashed. That's one thing I remember from deadlifting a lot. It's the rest of the day, your hands are just kind of like, ah. When I first started this series, I thought maybe, okay, every you know session I'll have some sort of like, like epiphany or like main realization. But this is just one of those behind the scenes days that you're just seeing what I do, you know? The deadlift today is whatever 225 is plus 35, no. 
Let's see. These are, this is 35, 35. So it's 70, 140. It's only 175 today. Not that much, right? Am I doing math right? 70, 70, 140. Bar is 35, 175. Not a lot of weight. But my hands are getting torn up like it's 500 pounds. So make that make sense. I think it's good to have at least one heavy day per upper body, lower body split. Even if you don't do squats and deadlifts, if you at least do a heavy squat or deadlift, that's good. There's lots of really cool machines these days that sort of simulate a deadlift that is great for people that don't know how to use a barbell, don't know how to use a trap bar. I used to use those machines at the gym that I worked at for people who were either like super intimidated or didn't have the form down right. So if you have a machine like that at your gym, ask for help or read the little instructions on the thing and give it a shot. If you've never done deadlifting before and you wanna make sure you protect your back, do what I told you in the very beginning, push those hips back, keep the weight at your sides, and push through your heels. You can do that. You can find a trap bar or a machine that is gonna make taking the guesswork out a little bit easier, do that. Never be afraid of using machines as a beginner, as an intermediate, as advanced. Machines are there for a purpose. Lots of people say, oh, well, they don't help with stability. Okay, if I'm doing heavy chest press, I wanna be doing you know, a machine that's safe. I don't care about my stabilizers in that moment. I'll worry about that when I'm doing dumbbell bench press or dumbbell incline press, whatever. You know what I mean? So understand what you're doing and then find a way to capitalize on the strength of that piece of equipment. Why are you hanging out in the rain, Aria? You can't, you won't even be able to go inside, baby. You're gonna hang out in the garage now for like at least 20 minutes. Did you go pee? Did you go potty? Oh, yeah, you're soaked, mom. Okay, look out, Gold. I'm doing my deadlifts. One, two, three. Not a fan. My hands are so, so you, mate. You pinched my finger. Let's see if I can do this without making a ton of noise. One of my goals in life, and I remember this when I was working in a gym, is to be so rich that I could afford the salary of somebody to pick up my weights when I'm done working out in my home gym. Or as an even bigger flex, take this weight butler to the gym, lift a bunch of weights, like do my heaviest day when I'm there, and then have this assistant just put all my weights back for me and just get everyone's reaction to that that'd be a great video for like a, for like youtube just pretend i'm paying someone to put my weights away for me some super privileged you know guy who works out and then when they leave to see oh what is he driving you know what kind of person is that i get in my toyota chr and i drive off oh, man that'd be funny all right so now we're just kind of doing some what i call greasing the wheels type exercises after a heavy day i don't really have a lot of energy but i still want to grease the wheels or the grease the heels, whatever the saying is, with some other exercises for legs that will help build mobility, functionality, things like that. So I just did squats and deadlifts, you know, very singular plane, meaning that I'm not going laterally, you know, that kind of thing. I'm not twisting or anything. So I want to do something that works on the lateral portion to have more well, you know, hip mobility and strength in the legs. So I'm going to do side lunges with a kettlebell. How you hold a kettlebell during any sort of exercise depends on what you're going for. If you let it hang, you're kind of just working on grip strength. If you hold it up here, it's a little bit more core stability. Because I am tanked right now, I don't want to spend the extra energy that I don't really have on stabilizing that much. So I am going to just hold it down low and I'm gonna do a single leg at a time. Meaning that I'm just doing one side repeatedly until I'm done with all the reps of that side. So that's three. And I'll do anywhere between eight to 10. Again, it's not meant to exhaust me. It's meant to grease the wheels a little bit. All right, the other exercise I'm gonna do for back is gonna be some good mornings. Just a great overall exercise to go very light on. It's not gonna tax you, but it's really gonna work your hamstrings and your back muscles, especially the muscles that go directly next to your spine called the spinal erectors, which always makes me giggle a little bit for obvious reasons. It's really coming down out there, huh, Golden? You're getting hella wet. No more going outside, Golden. All right, that's it for me today. Monday done.